Right. Well, the title from Emmett Fox is the Sermon on the Mount. I remember, Tim, you brought this up last week. The setting forth of the Sermon on the Mount is an almost perfect codification of the religion of Jesus Christ. It covers the essentials. It is practical and personal. It is definite, specific, and yet widely illuminating. Once the true meaning of the instructions has been grasped, it is only necessary to begin putting them into practice to get immediate results. The magnitude and extent of these results will depend solely upon the sincerity and thoroughness with which they are applied. That is a matter which each individual has to settle for himself, for herself. If you really do wish to become a different person altogether in the sight of God and man, then Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount has clearly shown you how it is to be done. If you are prepared to break with the old person and start upon the creation of the new one, then the study of the great sermon will indeed be to you the Mount of Liberation. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And that was, uh, uh, that uh, bit of scripture was from James's letter, chapter one, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So today we're going to carry on a bit from the conversation last week of words to live by. Uh, it reflected in the festival of Nauruz, which uh, is occurring now and has been for about 10 days in the Middle East and in the Indian subcontinent and in parts of the former Soviet Union. When we were talking last week, we explored different statements of belief or statements of how one is to appropriately live life according to various faiths and according to those uh, who do not have a faith or believe their faith is that there is no God. I was attracted to Nauru's, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, it's now Rus, uh, because it comes from a tradition even farther back than any of the religions we talked about last time. Uh, it comes from the Zoroastrian, or it starts in the, Zoro, uh, in the Zoro, Zoroastrian religions, which some people, some academicians believe occurred three to 4,000 BCE. Uh, others say more likely 1,400 to 2,000 BCE. Uh, uh, developed by someone named Zarathustra as a response to societal and religious, pagan religious beliefs that endowed princes and the priests with authoritarianism. His belief was that that is wrong, that all, including male and female, which was way ahead of the time, are part of this divine plan, this divine being, that our job here is to combat evil, make the world a better place. And there are, if you will, three principles that Zoroastrianism follows. Uh, follow the path, they call it the threefold path, Good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Second is ch use charity, do charity to maintain one's soul and to spread happiness. 
And the third is, be good for the sake of goodness without hoping for reward. Now think of that in terms of, I'll say the Beatitudes or the simpler motto of, the, uh, of at least some atheists that the goal of living this life is to leave this world better for having passed through it. And here they're talking good thoughts, good words, good deeds, charity, uh, treating, I've left this one out, uh, treating uh, male and female alike in spiritual equality and be good for the sake of being good, yeah, which Paul preaches in a sense. Uh, do not do good for reward. Uh, in a sense that salvation, don't expect to, do, to get saved because you've done some good. Now, Noruz came about BCE, uncertain exactly when, but it's formed, well, there's a, a story. And in fact, I've misstated. Nehru's, they know at least it was a thousand in the Christian era. Uh, and, and the story, and definitely a story, not there's no truth in it that anyone know, knows, of a very wise, very sensitive king, uh, Jamsi, who wanted to first celebrate when people had survived the darkness of winter uh, to facilitate the healing from the darkness of winter, both of ourselves and of the earth, to celebrate the blossoming. That is the start of the new year. For them, this is, uh, the solstice is the start of the new year. So, you mean the equinox? I'm sorry, the equinox is, is the start of the, the new year. Equinox. Um, but as the story goes, as he was thinking this and trying to decide what to do, he also realized that during this dark period of time, his subjects had started to quarrel with one another and injustices started to increasingly show up. And so he decided that part of the festival of Nowruz involved bringing peace, both for our shortcomings. You know, we have this uh, ritual of forgiveness that Elizabeth, you'll see later on as part of our regular service, but also to emphasize the healing of difficult difficulties in relationships. Uh, and the way he did it in, involved part of the Zoroastrian tradition. In, uh, in the Zoroastrian tradition, fire is one of the most potent um, symbols. Uh, they, actually, they actually talk about uh, other weather-related symbols too, but fire is the most important one. And in the festival, one of the things that happens, there's a ritual fire started. In fact, fire is so important uh, um, among the Zoroastrians that every temple in the world has a fire that never goes out. Because it is, the priests at the temple are responsible for tending the fire and keeping it going. And so one part of the ritual, the individual families will jump over the fire to cleanse their own impurities and to strengthen them for the year to come. People who have been estranged or in difficulty with one another are encouraged to do what it takes to come to peace between themselves. And then, and this may or may not be apocryphal, I can't, I don't know, uh, holding hands the two who have resolved their differences jump over the fire to cleanse the ill feelings, cleanse the problems, and renew their relationship as a positive. It is something that 
to a large extent, we seem to be sorely lacking now. And this is what I want to bring up. This will be a short talk, but it is something that has been, I've been thinking about a lot. If we look not just in, in the issues in this country, but if we look throughout the world, we're seeing that people have forgotten that there is a spiritual call to treat one another with spiritual respect. You know, I talk about the Quakers often who say that it is our duty as Quakers to respond to the spark of God in every man, woman, and child we meet. Or perhaps I should say every person we meet. This is part of the Zoroastrian tradition. It is something that we as a country, as a culture, and in so many other places, doesn't matter what the religious background is, but at present, if you look around the world, there's more hatred, generally speaking, than there was, has been in a long time. A more refusal to accept the differences or to make amends or to seek peace. And that's what I want to call on us today. Here we are, uh, we do a spiritual walk. We listen to the divine, ideally, or we're working to listen to the divine, to follow divine leading. Can it be said, and this is something I'd like you to think about this week, that you are following what the Zoroastrians call the threefold path, good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Particularly those of us who have a sense of the direct connection with input from the divine, have a sense of the spirits that come around us that we can call upon, have a sense of the existence or coexistence with people who have been in our life but are now on the other side, is it not even more important given this time of stress that we stay anchored in this infinity of being and being anchored in this infinity of being connected with it, communicating with it, receiving communications from it use that anchoredness to help those who do not have that awareness or who have lost it or who are mired in the day-to-day -day evil, as the Zoroastrians would say, the walk away from loving kindness, divine love. Are we setting a good example? Are we reaching out to help people understand that there's more, there's more out there than political differences, than the grudge for social distances, differences or economic differences. And I'm not trying to say that, say for instance, the huge disparity between the ultra wealthy and most of us is not God ordained. Please don't understand, misunderstand. The divine and Zoroastrians would say this, as do the Quakers. The divine wants the best for all of us. We are loved, but it's easy. Oh, even Emmett Fox, it's easy to get distracted by the problems now, as opposed to staying focused on divine love, our path, our service in this world and doing the best we can to lift ourselves and others from the quicksand of what my bishop would call the carnal side of life here. The quicksand of thinking that what car you drive is the most important thing 
how you appear to others is the most important thing. You know, Richard Rohr, Father Richard Rohr, whom I speak of often, has written about the cosmic Christ that he has come to understand exists. The Christ who has come in many forms, speaking many languages in many places on the globe, but with similar messages to humankind. And I'll say to you, Zarathustra could easily be one of those cosmic Christs. Look at what he taught. Compare it with what Jesus the Christ taught. With what Buddha taught. And by the way, Zarathustra did not approve of self-abnegation, living in poverty, fasting. There were limited cases for specific rituals in limited time that he, he would accept. But as a general religious rule, no. To him, that was not respecting who we are and our responsibilities on this earth. Think about it. Are you following the path that Zarathustra spoke of? Good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Examine your motivations this week. Have some conversations with the divine, however you and the divine communicate. Have some conversations with the spirits who guide you, if you have and know spirits that guide you. How can you walk more closely to the divine? How can you bring more of the divine to this world where the world tends to limit your connection with it? Or isn't this a wonderful time, this equinox? To add some more energy to lifting this world up and in so doing, removing so much of the pain, the hurt, the anger, the striking out at others that we're seeing. Mother, Father, God, we thank you for a beautiful and glorious day today. We thank you for this gathering that you have allowed us to have, the technology that makes this available the people here that make it available. We thank you for each other. We thank you for the love that we are capable of and the love that we are willing to share with each other in the whole world. Help us to be positive, optimistic people. Help us to share our light with other people so that we can bring about a real change on this planet. We ask this through the goodness of everyone on this planet and in the universe. Amen. Amen. Amen.